girl Jen, welcome back. Today I am tying up some loose ends of 2018. I wanna chat about some of my December favorites. I've got a lot to share with y'all, so let's just dive right in. All right, first up, let's talk about dental hygiene, everyone's favorite topic. I am gonna be real with y'all and admit that I do not floss as much as I should. I mean, you're supposed to floss every single day and that's something that I didn't really do. But to my defense, I think it's because I didn't find a floss that I really enjoyed. Before, I really liked using the dental plastic sticks, but you know, they're really wasteful and not great for the planet. And so I started using this one by Oral-B, but it just wasn't hitting the mark for me. And so that's why in December, I was stoked to find out about Coco Floss. I really like this floss because it is a lot more more thick and gritty than your average floss. So when you put it in between your teeth, it's very controlled and it really gets all the plaque and the gunk in between your teeth. I also like the fact that on the back, it shows you how long it's gonna last. I just like little charts like these, it's, you know, useful information and it actually makes me really excited to floss every night and it's something that I want to share with y'all because I cannot be the only one who hates flossing. Next up, let's talk about some hair accessories. These days I've been really liking to do my hair in this fashion. It's basically just two hair clips on each side and I think it just adds a little bit more volume to the hair and if I decided to you know, wear some earrings, it showcases that really well. First, I have these ones by Eight Other Reasons. They're these little heart-shaped clips and they're in this nice tortoise print and I think it really goes well with my hair. It kind of goes in with the highlights and the lowlights. I also have these hair accessories by the Sincerely Jewels and Squincy collaboration. They came in silver, rose gold, and gold, but I actually lost the rose gold pair, so I'm just surviving with the silver and the gold. I love the fact that they're just kind of like a fancy bobby pin, but you just pin your hair backwards and you just have some glimmer into your hair. I think it looks great. All right, so let's get into the books. I want to chat about Room First by Emma Donahue. If you guys have seen any of my vlogs, then you guys know that I absolutely enjoyed this book. It is basically a book about a woman who gets kidnapped by a strange man. He basically says like, hey, like my dog is sick, can you come help? And she decides to follow him and he ends up trapping her into his garden house or his garden shed in the backyard. And he's like soundproofed it. There is a pin lockbox on the front and in the inside. So even if she like, tried to kill him while he was in the room, like in his sleep or something, she would still be stuck there because she doesn't have the passcode out. So she's there for seven years, and while she's there, she ends up having a kid, and the little boy's name is Jack, and the book is written all through a five-year-old's perspective, and it just made me see kids in a different light, and they're actually a lot more smart than you think, honestly. They're very inquisitive, they're absorbing a lot of information, and it's just so pure how he sees the world, despite his horrendous conditions. So my next book is called Pachinko, and this was recommended by a bunch of y'all, so thank you so much for putting it on my radar. Truthfully, this book took me a little while to get in the groove with because I just had to get acclimated with the author's writing style. The first like section of the book or the first like 15% of the book is very like dry and straightforward and I realized like she had to do that because she had to kind of paint the picture and explain what was going on but after that whoo you are flying you are sucked in and I really saw my motherland with just like a deeper respect and appreciation of how resilient they were. So this book takes place in Korea and it's during the time where Japan has colonized them. So I think they're under the rule of Japan for 10 years by that point and you just see four generations in, of a family and it's so crazy to see them like slowly dig themselves out of it. I would say if you enjoyed East of Eden, I think you would like this book too. I feel like this is kind of like the Korean version of East of Eden and it's because it follows that family and it's just insane to see how like a great great grandparents life decisions can affect their like present day family members that are existing right now. So my next favorite is a Facebook watch show called Red Table Talk. This is Jada Pinkett Smith's talk show where she has her mom, Adrian, and her daughter, Willow, and they go around this table and they talk about really heavy topics that need to be spoken about, like body image, marriage, uh, surviving divorce. Uh, but my favorite one was about forgiveness because there's always at least like two people in your life that you can forgive. And it just made me see my family in a different way. 
this was an episode where Jada's brother came in and they were talking about their relationship with their dad and unfortunately he passed away through an overdose. It was up to them to forgive him for all the mistakes that he's done. And in that episode, I learned how awful roles and expectations of uh, what a parent should be can really mess up your mind. I feel like we all have this idea of what a good mom should do and what a good dad should do and when those expectations are not met, it could just leave you in a place of resentment and pain. It made me see my parents as beings that are on their own course of life and they just happen to have me on the way. And I would highly recommend that you guys watch this episode because what I'm saying will make a lot more sense, but it did make me forgive a lot of people in my life. I, I just feel like I have a more tender and open heart. So highly recommend it. Please go watch it. I'll leave it in the description box. So my last favorite is a TV show called The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So this TV show is a timepiece and it takes place in 1958. And I absolutely love the fashion and the interior design. And just like, I'm just fascinated by like the general state of living then. And it, it follows a character named Named Mrs. Maisel and she's a housewife and you know she ends up finding her way into stand-up comedy and she's just very charismatic and bubbly and just crass it's freaking awesome uh, and her being a stand-up co comedian is very revolutionary because at that time women were just expected to be home with the kids making jello molds and cleaning the house so for a woman to stand up on a stage and be honest and be funny and say out of the box things is was people didn't know what to do with it and so it's really cool to see her journey and yeah if you guys watch the show please tweet me i would love to talk about it with y'all all right guys that is a wrap on my favorites i am really sorry for the horrendous light i freaking hate winter because the sun goes down so fast i mean then again i could have just filmed earlier but you know I had things to do but I hope you guys enjoyed it and please let me know any of your favorites in the comments down below specifically books and TV shows and I love when you guys give me recommendations with a little bit of context like some background of what what it's about it gives me more like inclination to write it down and make me read it or watch it as well so yeah that is all I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys in the next one bye Mwah.